What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. Wiki, wiki. What's up? The wiki, wiki happens later. No, it doesn't. Is it before? It happened just before this. Oh, wiki, wiki. So we just re-wikied. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know which order this stuff happens. You yeah, know, yeah, I no, there's this. I just uh, record these things. Yeah, so there's an <laughs> intro, and the intro sometimes, because we switch between we intros. Do. That's right. Um, most of the, no, 50% of the time it ends with wiki, wiki, wiki and wiki. then we start talking. So hey, this one may or may not have ended with wiki, wiki. Oh, man. But maybe we should just start using the wiki, wiki, because people keep on, like, quoting the wiki, wiki. Everybody likes the wiki, wiki. Like, I remember when, uh, when Travis Houston came mm-hmm. on the show, he was like, I want to say the wiki, wiki. And I remember when somebody got like a t-shirt from us, they took a picture of the t-shirt and put it on Instagram and their caption said, wiki, wiki. There you I'm go. Like, people it's... like love the wiki, wiki. Same with the hashtag pink mic. I mean, there's, no, there's a lot of... No, nobody likes that part. Everybody does. <laughs> All right. So today we're talking with a dear friend of ours and uh, we actually were kind of, we're, we were helping him launch his initial push to his online business, which yeah. is really cool. And now... Oh my God, he's completely blown up. He's sold his in a good way, <laughs> and he's sold his like really really nice dental practices in Orange County. So I mean, like he's he's figured some stuff out along the way, and he's absolutely brilliant. Oh, talk about dude. a master at niche marketing. His niche was teaching dentists how to grow their dentistry mm-hmm. practice through online marketing. Totally. Yeah, so Dr. Ranesh Ganatra is a great friend of ours and of other listeners, <laughs> Justin Malik, uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, buddy with, uh, you know, Misha, he's previous, he's business, uh, I did business with him, good friend of mine, he's been on the podcast as well, so yeah, great guy. You always guy. tell when we record these intros that our brains are like a little bit fried from recording <laughs> for like eight hours straight, because we're like, we can't, no word talks anymore. Word talks, it's like right in the beginning of the day and at the very end of the podcast day, it's like, yeah, no, no brain can form words more anymore. That's pretty good, it's yeah. like you've been practicing that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ranesh, he, uh, so he... He basically told his story in a really cool way where he was exposing some of these things, these, these uh, you know, pulls and pushes that he experienced throughout this whole process mm-hmm. and really breaks down what those are, what they mean, how you can apply these similar things if you're looking to, mm-hmm. you know, transition into something different in your career, in your, in your business, whatever it might be. Yeah. My favorite part was actually when he started talking about like the five different uh, mindset yeah. things that you need to focus on like these are the five things that you need to improve your mindset on to to get for, uh, where you want to go and i really loved when we kind of got into the mental game with him and i'm gonna be totally honest when we jumped on this podcast i thought we were gonna kind of go down this route of niche marketing and talking about how he grow this this product in this um this world of selling to dentists and mm-hmm. talk about all the tactical techniques that he used to grow that but what we actually came out of this was a deep dive discussion and like really the the mental game and all the hurdles that you have to come over overcome and and all of these like i mean it, it was a, a way better conversation than i was even anticipating let's just put it that way <laughs> rats rats oh no that's yeah rat- yeah you well, got it we'll tell you what that means later <laughs> well that was actually my favorite part is the rats concept so um yeah You'll, yeah. you'll know what that means in a minute here. So, uh, Rinesh is amazing. He's brilliant. And now he's just a freaking rock star and just freaking marketing online now, which yeah. wasn't really the case when we first met him. But, dude, this guy has, he's gotten his stuff up to speed very quickly. Yeah. I'm going um, to commit a marketing no no here. Uh oh. I'm going to give is, two calls to action. Yeah, that's not okay. Is that's that a, possible? Is it going to break the universe, the internet? Yeah, I'm going to podcast well, airwaves. Any, any direct response marketer is going to be like, oh, you done effed up. Yeah, done but, effed up, man. I'm giving two uh, calls right, to action. Us. Go. All right. So if you go to drganatra.com, that's D R G A N A T R A. Did I spell it right? Actually, let me look at my I computer. So. D R G A N A T R A. Dr. Ganatra.com. Nailed it. He actually has a seven day sequence that actually breaks down this mindset process that he helps you go through. It's so a challenge. Definitely check that out. And then also, I want to, of course, pitch our traffic book. It's totally free. Pitching Ooh. a free thing. We're going to give you a free traffic book <laughs> if you go to uh, evergreenprofits.com slash traffic book. I'm sure if you listen to this podcast at all, you've heard me pitch it before. So I'm not going to go too deep in this intro so go to drganatra.com 
get on his uh, his seven day challenge and then go to evergreenprofits.com slash traffic book, grab our free traffic book that shows you how we do all our traffic ninjury. And on both of those pages, you'll be able to read all about it. Word read all about it. Word, so word up. Let's head over to Ranesh and start this bad boy. Hey, Ranesh, how you doing, my man? What's going on, Joe? How you doing? I'm doing great. And I know uh, it's it's been a while. So, well, you and I saw each other not that long ago at a mutual buddy of me, Shaw's place. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we have a lot of mutual friends. I'm learning more and more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. just, j- Justin Malik. Does that ring a bell to you? Who's that? Justin Malik. Oh, yeah. Justin. Yeah. Oh, my God. I've known him for so long. And... I, I went I went on a cruise with him <laughs> and a bunch of his family, my family, when we were like, I think, 14 or 15 or 16. Wow. So I've known him for a really long time and he's he's doing some really good things right now. Yeah, man. He Yeah, they were on the show, him and his partner, Lee, you know, the, yeah. we call him the old guys, old podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I think and- him too. Yeah, yeah, because we mastermind on podcasting stuff, you know, every other month, and and he brought you up. He's like, yeah, I've known Justin, or sorry, I've known Ranesh since birth. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, small world, man. Small world. It's crazy. It's super it's crazy. cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, so we we have a background. Yeah, obviously, I don't even know how we met each other. Maybe it was through Amish or someone else, but helped you out with, uh, you know, the the dental practice mastery back in the day. Your yeah. website. I mean, um. I remember, I know, I know how we met. We met through, it was, I believe it was Amish, uh, Amish mm-hmm. shot, and I needed somebody to do, sounds so basic now, but I needed somebody <laughs> to do my website. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And DSL. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, the video sales yeah. Letter. <laughs> so it was a website for my offices and my, um, well, actually my personal brand around my offices, uh, you know, when I was a dentist. Um, and he recommended you guys. And I remember you came to one of my offices and I mm-hmm. was just like, wow, you guys know what you're doing. And you guys had this big plan and everything. And I was, I was like, Hey, let's get going. Let's do it. And I, yeah. you guys put together that first, um, website for dental practice mastery. It was kind of like a blog site. Right. Yeah. It was and, an iteration uh, number one. <laughs> yeah. And since then I I've just been, other things have happened and I've grown and kind of expanded that, um, vertical to different value pieces and all that stuff so it's been really fun yeah, yeah. well let's let's actually talk about the, the the sort of history and the progression a little bit um you know when when we met you you were still a practicing dentist um and you were you were already in the space of you know teaching other dentists how to grow their practice how did you you know while you were a dentist how did you sort of shift into online marketing and then eventually fully get out of the dentistry practice? Like what, what does that progression look like? Yeah. I mean, I love this question because this question lets me talk about <laughs> my passion. Let's me talk about kind of like, you know, what I've leaned into. So I like my wife always makes fun of me. She's like, Oh my God, you, you're just going to go on about this stuff yep. <laughs> at dinner. Make sure you don't go on about this at dinner. I'm like, look, I'll control it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, luckily, like, the listeners so, are the people that love this kind of story. Exactly, so. <laughs> exactly. You're, right you're so passionate about this. Um, you know, it's like something that you were struggling with. You want to share with other people. So you're like, it's like going and like having like a piece of chocolate that you love. And like, you're like, oh my God, this is the best piece of chocolate like, or this <laughs> best piece of chocolate cake or whatever it is. You have to try it. And yeah. that, that's kind of how it was with this thing, um, which I'm going to get into and uh, I love sharing this story because it was just, I was at a place where I know a lot of your listeners or, you know, people that in general are in their career or their work or wherever they're at. But, you know, I was a dentist and I did it for 15 years and I was, I was good at it. You know, I like to think, and mm-hmm. I had three offices. I had built them from scratch, you know, you know, office one, office two, office three, literally from construction to marketing, to generating a team to running business, running the systems behind that business, to seeing literally like tens of thousands of patients all yeah. in Orange County. Yeah, and, and, and they're free, they were beautiful offices too. I remember when we went to the one and met you for the first time, and we were like, holy crap, this is like <laughs> the nicest dentist office I've ever seen. And you had yeah, your systems that, dialed. That's like I did. Like that's what I did. And uh, back then when I built them, I was single and I, would, you know, I was working till like late hours. And that was just my life and I loved it. And the patients loved me. I loved them. And it was just so awesome. And, but, you know, just like, I've never believed that 
you are just meant to do just one thing in your life. Like, mm. you know, the world, I always feels like tries to push you and push you and you, you get pushed to, to, to be number one. You get pushed to do better or to achieve or to get to that next goal. There's this pushing effect in the world. But I really started feeling, feeling what I like to refer to as the pull. And the pull is different because it's that thing inside you that you sense. It's mm. like that kind of insight between your thoughts that says, oh, this is what you really want to do. or This is where you really want to go to next. And so far, your history has served you. But to hit the future, this is like where you need to lean into. And you sense this pull. And everybody, I feel like a lot of people sense the pull. Yeah. And sometimes just the struggle of the day overcomes you. And you're just focused on the day and focused on just getting to that next step. And then not taking that time for yourself to really see what is it that's pulling you. Yeah. And I started to do that with when I was running between offices and I started to first do that through books and courses. And I remember going through my offices and I was just working so hard and it was like six, seven days a week. And I was just like, man, this is crazy. I, I love serving people and patients and, but there just has to be a better way where I can enjoy more of a lifestyle and contribute and have a better kind of mission towards, you know, just more lifestyle based and more fulfillment through just being able to have space and time and <laughs> contribution for myself and those that are around me. So mm -hmm. I started thinking about my business that I was in. I was like, man, my business has three things that I think are constricting its growth. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, I want to share, I want to share these three things oh, that hey, I feel yeah, like were a huge constriction on. And I think a lot of brick and mortar businesses have this, not, not that, it, not that they're bad, but it depends on what you want in life. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to grow, you want to scale, it's, it's, it's different. If you want a lifestyle, you have to manage these three things really well. And, and those are for dentistry specifically, when I had the three offices, it was people dependent. So if my front office didn't come to work or if, you know, my assistant wasn't there or somebody missed, I, I would be essentially, I'd be screwed because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, they're not there. I don't have an assistant. Like I, I can't serve. I can't yeah. do the procedure or whatever it is, or it's harder to do it. So it's people dependent. It's time dependent. Whereas if I don't go into work, then I don't really make the revenue <laughs> or create an impact because yeah. I physically have to be there. Now I could have associates. I can have other doctors working for me. But you know what? Essentially, if they're not there, then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And it's location dependent, meaning, right. hey, we had these three locations and we had tens of thousands of patients, but you know, most of our patients would come from Orange County. You know, I'd get the few super fans that came from like San Francisco or Italy or whatever it is, but wow. those were really few. And I was flattered and honored and it was so cool to, to even be able to say that. But <laughs> after a point, you're like, man, this is very location dependent. I can only serve this 10, 15 mile radius around me. So I'm like, man, the ideal business would be people, location, and time independent. Hmm. So yeah. I'm like, there's only two things that I know that have that. The, one, the first thing is real estate, where it's like after you build something up enough, then you can have this passive income, but you're not going to get rich overnight in real estate most of the time. Right. Uh, it's more of a long-term play. It's more of an investment play. And the other one is the internet, where <laughs> yeah, yep. you have tools and systems and processes. If you're sick or someone's having a bad day, the system or the tool... You know, there's so many tools like webinar software, Zapier, there's course fulfillment software. There's so many tools out there that will continue to do and get your value piece, whether that's a informational value, whether that's a physical product value, whether that's a book, whether that's a program, it will get that value piece out to the end user consistently. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, and you can scale it and people from all over the world, you'll have access to. It's not just the small radius. So I got so enthralled by this concept of, wow, like I am, what I do here and I put something on video, somebody from all, like across the world can see it hmm. and buy it. And I was just like, whoa, this is amazing. <laughs> um, and you guys, I know you guys know all about this and you guys are really yeah. good at this. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of this right now. I'm like, it, and I've been told this by my, like my sister, we, there's a, something came up where 
randomly someone was listening to our podcast and reached out to i think it was my wife and i was just telling this whole story and they're like oh yeah i loved love joe's podcast joe and matt's yeah. and i didn't know who this person was they're in new york city and uh and i was just like yeah doesn't surprise me like mm, at this yeah. point because we've done it for 12 plus years and she was like wow you're already you're already ego into it i'm like no it's like the fact no. that this space is vast and it doesn't surprise me that yeah. these folks are listening <laughs> it's not a dick yeah. or an ego way but it's amazing i love it it's yeah. it's amazing yeah. so um and you're not surprised about it because it's it's almost commonplace for you now because you right. guys have reached so many people all over the world and it's not that you're not flattered still you are but it's just sure. more commonplace yeah yeah um, and that's and, that's that's amazing yeah and to that end i have to say that i can still remember um you know i i can still remember i got this it all started for me after i came up with this idea of okay i need to have people location time independence with my business I, I i don't know if you guys know this but um maybe you got this too but back in the day tony robbins came out with a series it, it was called the new Money Masters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nope. Totally remember I that. I remember those yeah. for sure. Frank oh. Kern was in there. Uh, John Jeez. Reese. Yeah. Yep. I remember those. And that was such a game changer for me. So I got a, a DVD. Everybody got a DVD and a booklet in the mail every month for 12 yeah. months. It's like 97 bucks a month. And I would just immerse myself in this stuff. And I was just so amazed at people that were, they were making a million dollars in a week. Mm -hmm. They were having you know a, a lifestyle that they wanted. They were having the impact that they wanted. And some people make hundred thousand dollars in like you know a month, and I'm like, how are these guys doing this? <laughs> and for me, it wasn't always really just about the money. It was more so about how how do I liberate myself so I can get the lifestyle and the freedom, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how are these people doing this? So I got so enamored by this and just so immersed. And Tony came out the, with that book, and you know, I, you know, in that and not the book, the series, there was Frank Kern, Evan Pagan, uh, Russell Brunson, Jeff Walker, Brenda Burchard. All these guys, uh, Dean, uh, Dean Jackson, so yep. many of them, and they all became mentors. And I took almost all their courses, read all of their books, and I was like, this is the way to go. And I then, a few months after that or around that, I also read, which everyone's read this. Four-hour um, work week? The, the four-hour work week. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. <laughs> you said it, right? Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that just, that combo tipped it over the edge. I was like, okay, something's here. Like there is something here. And I got, <laughs> I got started. I started from zero. I was, I had the three offices and I got started on this new path and I started digging in and I said, look, I need to create something here. I, I'm, I'm new to this space. I, if I don't know it, I got to learn it. I got to take the course, read the book, immerse myself. And I started and I wrote my first book, hmm. uh, Reinventing Dentistry for the Dental Space. And that turned out to be a bestseller on Amazon. And then I created a full course for other dentists on how to build, market, and grow their practices. And I remember, uh, you guys, you got, I remember this. It <laughs> was, it was uh, I'm Indian, back, my, my background's Indian. And in the Indian culture, we have a holiday called Diwali. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Diwali is like the Indian New Year. It's the, it symbolizes the, you know, the light over the darkness. And there's so many more, you know, depth to this. I'm probably like, you know, not giving it its due <laughs> yeah, diligence. Yeah. It's but, huge. It's huge. But it is the Indian New Year and it's huge. So if you, I know you guys have Indian friends, like they, they always celebrate this. So mm -hmm. I remember I launched my course and I hit send on my emails to my list, which was a really small list back then. And I went to bed and I woke up that morning and I looked at my phone and there was this notification on my phone and the subject line was cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what, like, what is this? Like, and that was just a standard subject line from a, a sales notification. I didn't set it. The, the, the provider did. And I was like, whoa, I turned around. I told my wife, I was like, this is in the morning. First thing in the morning, before I even got out of bed, I looked at my phone. <laughs> I was like, somebody bought my course. This is the first person ever that bought a course from me. And here's the thing. I'm out here in Orange County, California. Yeah. And the person who bought it was from Australia. <laughs> 
And I was blown away. Now, this was a, a full $2,000 course. It was amazing. And I, it was like 90 videos, tutorials, templates. It was everything. Um, probably way too much information, but this person loved it. And, hmm. and I was just like, whoa, someone just paid me for a program I put together. I, I spent months putting this together, hours and hours. And it was literally while I was sleeping, literally like, you know, they say <laughs> entrepreneurs work all day to make money while they sleep. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It was True. literally while I was sleeping. <laughs> I was like, they bought this and it was $2,000. And this to me, like shifted my, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like how mm -hmm. cool is this? And that was the start of the journey of creating programs and courses uh, yeah. specifically for other dentists in that niche. And then since then, I've branched out to my real passion, which is personal development and growth and you know, really reaching towards that next level of where you want to go. Like, mm -hmm. What's pulling you in your life? Once you start sensing the pull, then great things start to happen. Like you, If you can line yourself up with what's pulling you, then you get to that place quicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually, I remember our very first sale ever. I remember exactly who it was. I even remember their name. Yep. Who was it? Do you, yep. Joe? I do too. Uh, Oh my God. You know, you know who our first sale was? Oh, you know, oh, your first that? sale. Yeah, no. yeah. I'm like, wow, that'd be really interesting if you guessed <laughs> yeah. our first sale. Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. No, it's, 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 it? it's funny because Joe and I back, this is roughly 2007. We put together like a little online course. We were blogging at the time. And one day I checked my email and I was like, holy crap, we actually made our first sale. This is amazing. And I, I went and showed Joe and me and Joe were like high five and going, this, this works. We made money. We made money. And then, um, Joe went back to his, well, then girlfriend at the yeah. time, uh, now his wife yeah. and, and went and was telling her how excited uh, we were that we made our first dollar. And then Heather, his wife kind of got like a funny look on her face and went, yeah, that was me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. No way. We were both in our day job still. That's right. That's why I didn't remember it because it was actually my wife. <laughs> that yeah, was she, Heather, huh? Yeah, she was trying because she saw how hard we were working. And this is actually affiliate marketing is how we kind of started. Oh. Not our own products. And, and yeah, and it was that how night. Was I was so for? jacked up and excited. I don't remember how much it was worth. It Maybe like a $30 <laughs> commission to us or something. Because I think yeah. we were all affiliate marketing at the time. It was like a CPA thing. And literally, it was oh. like selling. It was like a Gatorade something or other. Yeah, <laughs> we think, didn't know oh. what we were doing. Yeah, we had, a, we had a blog about personal finance. And I think we were selling like supplements yeah. or something on it. Because we we're like, oh. well, let's just throw stuff at it and see what works. She, uh. she wanted to motivate us. And, and it worked because. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it did legitimately put the fire in our bellies and we're like, yes, we got <laughs> you something. It. You felt yeah. what it would felt like to get a sale. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it, it wasn't At long moment, after that until that. we, yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling and it definitely, you know, that's when the light bulbs hit in the poll. Like you said, it's like validated. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then that, but, but leading up to the pool, this is what I want to ask you. You had all this infrastructure, you built these offices, blood, sweat and tears, like literal blood probably if you're building this stuff <laughs> um your pull i and mean he's drilling into people's teeth and stuff so like <laughs> literal, that blood. <laughs> literal blood <laughs> that too how do you i mean you you proved yourself here was this the thing that really was the catalyst where like screw it yes this is it not looking back yeah or okay now was it was the original goal to have your dentist practices and the online thing and kind of run them at the same time and, you know, kind of have double the income because you got both businesses running or was the goal always let's build this to replace this? Man, I, I wish you guys were at dinner with me everywhere I went. <laughs> 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 These are such great questions. Um, you know, it was, I knew that I didn't want to be doing dentistry till I was 60. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it. it for me, I'm like, it, you know, I had been, I'd done it for 15 years. It wasn't like I tested it or did it for three years and I was out. Like I did it for 15 years. I had built three offices from scratch. Like I had done it. And, um, and I was like, I, I don't want to do this model, this business model. So I was, you know, 60. Yeah. And there is so much out there in the world. And, you know, we always hear Tony Robbins say, hey, if you want to claim the island, burn the boats, right? Like mm -hmm. everybody's heard of that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and if you haven't heard of that, that's a really powerful statement. But at the same time, you know, most of the time, most people are not ready to claim the island just by burn burning the boats because they got bills to pay. They got a life to live. They got kids. They got family. And, right. you know, that's where I was. I had bills to pay. And, you know, just recently married. And, you know, we didn't at that time. 
Uh, I didn't have, uh, you know, any kids at that time I didn't. And, um, mm-hmm. I knew I set a goal for myself. I said, by 40, I remember telling my wife this, I, I said, by 40, I will be out and I will be doing what I want to do full time. And I'll be totally into that. And that's what, that is my stop. That is my outcome that I'm like, that is my scheduled timeline that I'm putting in there. And I remember one day, um, you guys, I remember coming home one day from practicing and it was just like a, another, another day, just like any other where I'd come home super late. Maybe I'd skip lunch. I'd be working. And I know this sounds like, oh my God, you get to skip lunch. Like, <laughs> oh, poor you. But you know, when you're seeing like 20 to 30 patients a day and you're on and you're like asking them about how their cruise was, their pet was, their, their yeah. du- you know, this, <laughs> that, their, you know, every, everything, you are fully there for your patients. And then you are just running all day. And, you, and not, mind you, dentistry, you were actually doing microsurgeries on them every day. Wow. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'd come home seven, eight o'clock and I'd just be spent. And, and then of course I'd have to be there, you know, present with the family and stuff and you know, with my wife and which was awesome. But at the same time, I remember coming home one day and I was, uh, we had met at my parents' place for dinner. And I remember sitting down. I remember exactly where I was sitting. I remember exactly where my dad was sitting. I remember coming home and my dad was sitting across from me and he said, how's your day going? You know, how was your day? And my wife was there and, and my wife just knew what I was going to say because I'd said it so many times. <laughs> and I told my dad, I was like, you know what? I am going to continue trying to do what I want to do. And the only thing that can stop me is me dying. Mm-hmm. Now, that sounds very morbid. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I said, it's either I'm going to die or I'm going to continue this thing because I will not stop this thing that I want to do. And death is the only way that will stop me, but right. I will continue on this path until I get there. And I knew, I mean, God bless, you know, with blessing from above. Like I knew that if I continued and if I stayed the course and if I persevered and I was okay with no results in the beginning, all these things. I knew I would see it. I knew it would happen. I knew that this was this next step was meant for me. It was the pull. And, you know, lo and behold, I hit 40 and I sold. I'm 42 now. I'm going to be 43 this month. Um, and I, I'm, you know, I hit 40 and I sold my last of the three offices. Hmm. And wow. I, I was out. And as soon as this business, the online business started taking off, which it did, after years of churning it, um, I was like, okay, now we got some revenue and some platform here. I can sell these things so I can double down on this other thing. Yeah. And that's really what I want to lean into. And I remember selling my last office and I remember having, and I, I haven't even shared this with anyone. I remember having a, a sense, this feeling in my heart. And for whatever reason, this was the word that kind of just rang through in my heart. It was service. Hmm. It was service. And I got that sense of, okay, you sold now your offices. Now go serve. Now go serve. Hmm. Now be of service. Be there to serve the people that need you. Maybe it was the audience that I had built up in that specific industry. Maybe it was the audience that I'm going, that I'm in the process of building in a, another uh, area of personal development and growth. Maybe it's those people that have yet to come into your world. But the thing was, Go out now and serve. And to me, like that concept of serving and being ready to serve and being called to serve and having the opportunity to serve, oh, that mm. lights me up. Mm. That's so cool. Now, everybody has a different way they're going to serve. Some people f- serve physically. They go out and they, they fight you know, for our country. Some people are out there in hospitals. Some people are, you know, clinicians. Some people are driving cabs. Some people are, you know, at fast food restaurants and they're serving their family because they're working the jobs that nobody wants to work. But for me, that service was what I am leaning into now doing, which is what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. So it is awesome. So if there's Mm -hmm. anyone out there listening, and if you're listening to this and you are being pushed by life, just like I was and I am and you are. We're always going to be pushed. You will feel the push. The push will be in your face. Take some time. Quiet down. Give yourself that that space. Maybe it's the walk from your car to your work. Maybe it's that three minutes in the morning in the shower, whatever it is. Give yourself that space where you get to sense 
the pull. Mm. What's pulling you? What is pulling you? Because I promise you, when you line up with that, you will go to that outcome so much quicker than the world trying to push you there. Because when you line up with the pull and then you build your own momentum on that pull, it's almost like that human, you know, treadmill, right? Like the, the walkway and you go mm-hmm. to airports, the airports are super long. You just get onto the, uh, what's the name of that? Just like, a, I guess. Uh, uh, like an escalator. Or like yeah. A, like an escalator. Yeah. It just moves straight. Yeah, yeah. And you line up with that and you start running on that. Guess what? You get there quicker. Yeah. So for me, I would encourage anyone to follow their pull and to follow that. Cause when you do that, you get that fulfillment, you get that place of service, contribution, whatever yeah. is meaningful for you in your life that happens through that. So this is interesting because this is, uh, well, for one, it sounds like you have a, and I know you well, but um, it, just for just the excitement and just the tone in your voice, it sounds like you're similar to me where, uh, you know, you're, you're really excitable. You, you have this thing, this future piece, you know, you have this future that you really want to live and serve and however that develops, but you have this, pull, like this pull is freaking deep and you might not know exactly what it is but you're so excited but uh you know taking the time to slow down like you said the walk to the car just to just think what is it that i'm actually doing i know for me personally like you said showering for is is one of the times and now twice a day is is like that's my quiet time where i might be like cycling through all this stuff i'm doing or these things i didn't do and i'm beating myself up maybe because i overload my plate that's just my personality Uh, but then i'll be like (laughs) oh wait hold on so what is the core thing to this what am i really trying to do and usually in those moments is in the silence of not doing just sitting like oh oh that's the thing like that's the real pull like it's like there's all these other things that mask maybe the pull but maybe aren't yeah. really the pull it's a good thing you uh need thinking time otherwise you'd always stink <laughs> that's true <laughs> exactly. that's, good. that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one yeah. <laughs> but it, it's it, that that's something i realized in myself and and is that something that you think you have noticed as well in yourself i know personalities are all totally different we're Super. You mean as far as sensing it or giving Slow. yourself space in your day to sense it? Yeah, it's this, it's kind yeah. of both and, and realizing yeah. what is the real pull because, you know, you yes. might have these quote unquote like false pulls like, yes. you know, that pull you in the wrong direction. Well, yeah, absolutely. Like if you are so engrossed in the push and you're going to be so frustrated, you think your pull is going to be yeah. this frustration. Really, it's usually not what you see at the surface. It's deeper, right? Right. And you have to give, especially now in the world we live in today, where we're inundated with all this information and people just don't give themselves time. They're, they're always constantly reacting, right? They're always, their day is privy to randomness. And Mm -hmm. I always tell people, look, if you are okay with randomness in your day, then you're going to live a life of reactivity. Mm -hmm. And if you are prioritizing structure in your day, you're going to live a life of freedom right? Um, structure. And I learned this one from Tim Ferriss. Uh, one of his podcasts, he had like structure equals freedom. Yeah. And I don't remember who said it on one of his podcasts, but I think that to me is true. And I'm by, by nature, I'm not a structured person. I have to like sit down and be like, okay, what's my day like today? What am I, what, <laughs> how do I want to feel? How do I want to show up? What is my intentional emotion that I want to bring to this moment? Like I have to do that. And yeah. I think everyone should bring some of that. And like, you know, we're doing this podcast. I'm like, okay, what do I want to bring here for this hour? Like how, what do I want to bring? And that's a very conscious question. Mm, And around that, I also feel like as you sense that pull and you sense that, okay, this is what I really want to do. Like, this is what excites me. This is where a lot of my energy is going. This is what I enjoy learning. This is what I enjoy talking about. This is what my friends naturally ask me about. Those things are insights to your pull. And, you know, meditation can give you some of those insights. Quiet mm-hmm. time, white space, um, you know, oh, oh, this is a good one. This is one that <laughs> uh, another way to amplify and really sense this pull is I came out with this acronym. It's called take out the rats. Mm. Now, taking out the rats is the way you will immediately start to sense the pull. And the rats stand for random access times, random access times. 
Uh-huh. What does that's that mean? So, yeah. Don't check social media at those random access times. If you're standing in line at Subway, don't whip out your phone just because you have three minutes because you're not up yet. Don't just start scrolling on social media. Uh, here's another one. I mean, maybe this is a little too crass, but this is true. If you're sitting in the bathroom, like <laughs> almost everyone, they're sitting there and they whip out their phone. Yeah. yeah. That's a random access time. Maybe you're waiting for your server to come and you're at the table and you just whip out your phone. That's a random access time. You see what happens is, and, I, and I'm, I'm only talking about this because I have failed at this and I have just recently improved this in my life and I've seen a huge, huge um, benefit from it. When you take out the rats, the random access times that you check in to the world, what happens is you kind of, your mind goes into this flow state within your day. So you may be at Subway and now you're going to feel this or you're waiting for, you know, to place your order and you're standing in line. You're going to feel this overwhelming temptation to just grab your hand, put your hand in your pocket, whip out your phone or go into your purse if you're a woman and take out your phone. You're going to feel that sensation to do that. Don't do it. Hmm. Let that sensation be and let it calm down. Let your mind go through that sensory process. And what, will, what, you, what you'll find on the other end of that is a sense of intuition, a sense of awareness with where you're at, a sense of calm. And you'll be like, okay, wow, you will start getting insights. You will start getting intuition. You'll start getting things that come your way now because you are not disrupting these white space pockets of your day with reactivity, with mm-hmm. checking in. You, you can't check into a hotel and still <laughs> be at your house. Right. Yeah. Same thing. You, you can't uh. check into these social platforms, which I love. I love the online world. And that's where I've built my business around. But yeah. y- either you manage the superpower or it kind of mangles you, right? Yeah. yeah no, this is, so, I can relate to this. So, like, this is so timely. You won't even believe it for me personally. I know, like, because I, those random access times, those rats. I mean, yeah, going unchecked. I know my personality type is <laughs> just like all we, over the we place. We all suffer from it. Yeah, and and just like and it's compounded with things like this podcast. Like, okay, well, we learn a crap ton from each one of these, so <laughs> we want to go try stuff out or research yeah. more. Or uh, yeah, social media. Like I've told Matt, like every day, if I just don't check Facebook for maybe two days, there's like over a hundred notifications. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. You know? <laughs> when it comes to social media, I feel like we have the opposite problem. We don't <laughs> check in enough, and that's where all of our customers are hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because yeah, we don't. <laughs> It's without putting the barriers like, yeah, if yeah. you're time blocked, all right, 30 minutes, boom, there's just social media time. Yeah, you exactly. Know? I actually feel like this but- podcast is our sort of pull thing. At least for me, it is. Yeah. Like the, I've been podcasting since 2010 and every time I'd start up a podcast and it would go for a few months and then I'd kind of wind it down and then like three weeks later, I'd start to like yearn to podcast again. That's probably not the best uh uh, whatever the best verb for it. But uh, anyway, I, I always wanted to podcast again. And so I kept coming back to it. And this podcast, we, you know, we're been doing it for almost two and a half years now, but this is like the thing that I feel like pulled to do that no strings attached. We're not, no, nobody listening to this is paying us money to listen to yeah. this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, this is one of our contributions to the world. Um, is it was, Joe and I have been blessed to grow a great network and um, have a mailing list and have followers and have people that we can put in front of our audience. And, you know, we, we just kind of do it with no strings attached because we love it more than anything. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that about you guys. And you guys give that off where you guys are doing this because it's your pull. It's like you're, it's like what's inside you. And you're just like your creative art within that you're putting out into the world. And, also, I was so honored to be yeah. on this podcast with you guys. I'm like, wow, this is awesome because yeah, man. Oh, these this- guys are just approaching it from like the best place. Thank you. No, I appreciate that because that's we've always had big respect for you because I mean, just literally from day one of understanding of what you've done with the dental practices at that time, that's when we were obviously chatting a lot more. And then since then, it's been check-ins here and there. But the progression yeah. that you've made, we're like, oh my god! And oh, then we, thanks, you know, and then we start seeing your Facebook videos everywhere, and we're like, <laughs> dude, Rinesh has dialed in his marketing. Like, yeah. oh, he is to- totally graduated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got to well, enjoy it, right? And 
Um, and that's where I do agree with those that say, because, you know, if you're, if you don't enjoy it, you won't stick through it when it gets muddy, right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, it, it, you, we, we've heard of that. I think it was that Steve Jobs quote or that interview where he's like, Hey, if you, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're passionate about it, then you're not going to stick through it. And you're not going to be insane enough to stick through it when it <laughs> gets really tough. And I'm like, wow, he was so right on that. Yeah. Oh, just you imagine know. what he went through, getting fired from his own company, and yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, it's no, he had that deep, burning passion, that pull. Yeah, and I, you know, I, there was something that you said earlier about how you set this goal for at forty years old to sell your practices, which is amazing that you did it because most people, you know, that's yeah. well, Matt and I were talking about this yesterday, or maybe it's two days ago, where sometimes people have this this thing that they write down this goal that they have, but it becomes more of like. You, it's almost like a stressor that when you achieve it, then what, you know, and it might actually make it harder to achieve if it's this big goal that you put out for yourself. Have you, did did you find that being a thing for you as being, you know, did you you know, for me, this achieving that goal was the gateway or the door that, that was like the, the open door, like achieving that goal open the door for me to dive full force into this other thing that I had going, which was my business online where I was teaching and training online and with my courses and my programs. Um, and that was like, wow, now I can do this full time. This is awesome. And I already had a, a, a good revenue coming in through that. Right. Um, but I had done, I was doing both. I, I, you know, I was, people say, Hey, you know, cl- to claim the Island, burn the boats. That's awesome. But for me, I had, I had bills to pay people to, you know, all that stuff. So sure. You know, I had student loans, so I'm like, I was doing both. Hmm. So once I got this online thing strong enough to support my lifestyle and all that, I went full force. And selling that was like, hey, now I'm full force. Now I can create and aim for another outcome here. Yeah, and another thing. And and people always like a lot of, and it's weird. Like a lot of people in the world still don't get this space of this this online space where you can sell products. <laughs> programs, anything like look at Amazon, right? Like yeah. anything like value, people still are a little confused about it. And uh, I always tell people like, you know, I'm 42, like my generation of people, I feel like they're probably the most lost on it because they're still wondering, should I post this online? <laughs> mm-hmm, <yeah. laughs> like, whereas True. if you talk to the guy that's 16 or 17 or 15, this is part of their life. Like yep. this this is their way. Like yeah. us, we're like, oh, I don't know. Was that a good, po-? like you have to get over that hurdle. And mm. people are like, oh my God, didn't you make oh, way more money as a dentist? I was like, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> like what I'm doing now is my passion. I'm into it. And to me, that's been way more lucrative than yeah. this other thing. Now I say that openly because I also want to inspire other people to be like, there is this whole world out there. If you are sick of your job or if you don't enjoy what you want to do, the greatest asset you can give up is time. Right. And now with the internet, we are blessed to have time leverage through businesses and value that we can create and put on there. And like, and that's huge. And you gotta learn it. You gotta like, and that's one thing, you know, you guys, if you don't mind, I'd like to get into like the five real mindsets that if you are going to follow your pull and if you are going to say, Hey, look, this is the next thing I want to do. Yeah. There are five mindsets that for that totally have helped me that I feel like if, if your audience dials these five out, Ooh, it is. I mean, it's, they're unstoppable. No, I don't really want to tell our audience to just keep <laughs> that for us. Yeah, you we'll, know? we'll stop the recording and then you tell us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> of course. I love mindset stuff because I know yeah, it's yeah, let's just st- pause this. We <laughs> can discuss this. And we'll just keep this information from this. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> no, yeah. Let's, let's hit, let's hit him, please. This is great. So, um, and I hope I'm not over, you know, I hope I'm not talking too much here. I, I don't, I want, if you guys want to get something in, I would love to, no, I, no, no, I learned you are, so much from you guys as well. So this is but great. I'm so excited about mm. these. <laughs> Go for it, man. No, I love the energy. Okay. So, you know, if you are in that place, you're like, okay, I, I need to switch. I need to jump. I need to do something different. I, you know, I'm in my field. I'm sensing the pull. I want to go here. I want to do this. I have this mission or this vision or this dream, or I just don't even know what I want to do. I want to start on it a little bit. Realize that as you start on things, you take the first step, encoded in that first step is the insight, the 
intuition, the intelligence you need to take the next step. So you got to keep taking those steps. But as you're doing that, you have to have the right mindset. And I've learned that these five are huge. So Hmm. let's just get into them. Uh, I know we don't have too much time, but I want to kind of give you a nutshell. But the first one is tolerance. You have to realize that wherever you're at in your life, you are going to get what you are tolerating. Now, Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you don't accept your situation. You have to accept the situation. Um, You know, acceptance is a very spiritual quality. Like, accept where you are. Fully embrace it. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. But tolerance is different. Tolerating says, hey, I hate this. This sucks. But it's okay. That's where I am. That's where I'm supposed to be. And that's just my outcome. That's my end. Mm -hmm. Tolerating doesn't allow you to grow. You have to make that decision saying, hey, I accept it 100%. Cool. But I will not tolerate this. Meaning that, hey, if I'm being, abu- I'm, abu- I'm being abused in this situation, this relationship, this job, whatever it is, I have a plan. I'm going to seek help. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get out of this position. I am mm-hmm. no, no longer going to tolerate a standard, an action, a, a um, predicament below what I know I'm capable of. And I can tell you you're capable of so much more beyond your current situation in almost every scenario. So realize that you get what you tolerate. If you keep getting it, you have to check in with yourself. Are you tolerating it? If you're tolerating it, shift and say, hey, no more. Hmm. Back up against the wall. I'm going to shift. The second thing is, the second mindset is this whole perfect time mindset where we think that we need to have all green lights for us, for the world to support our dreams. That just because we're on our dreams, just because we're doing what we want to do, the world's going to give us all green lights. And we think that the world is going to give us convenience. Hmm. It's quite the opposite. I always tell people, look, your dreams are not sold at the convenience store. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What's sold at the convenience store? Deodorant, a pack of gum, um, Gatorade, right? Mm -hmm. The basics are sold at a convenience store. You go, you fill up gas in your car, the convenience store is there. The basics are sold at a convenience store. Your dreams are not basic. They're like the quick fixes are the, the easy quick thing. fixes are sold at the convenience store. Totally. So don't think that because you know what you want to do or because you're leaning into that thing that makes you happy, that the world's just going to give you a plate of convenience and perfect timing. You're going to have to do that maybe at midnight. You're going to have to do that after you just got done, you know, with three crying kids and you're frustrated and mm. you've got to still do it. Maybe you had a fight with your significant other and you're just like, oh my God, I got to focus and do this. Yes, you need to do this. You need to buckle down. Maybe you had some issues with the family, with work. Someone said something wrong and you have this turmoil in your head. Those are not perfect times, but that's when you need to double down and do your dreams, do what you want to do. Because when you start doing that, those challenges form a bond with your dreams. Mm. It's like going skydiving. When you jump out of a plane and you're buckle to the instructor, you form a bond with them. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> that's like a really scary position to be in. And you're like, you form a bond. You're like, hey, man, you got me. That's good. I trust you. <laughs> Same awesome. thing with your dreams. You are going to form a bond with your dreams when you do go through those tough times. It's the world saying, hey, how much you want it? I want you to get connected. I want you to feel what it's going to feel like to really keep and nourish this dream. And the only way it's going to do that is to really sometimes get you through the mud. Sometimes it's going to have you do those things at those imperfect times. Yeah. And number three, it's skill up. So everyone wants to start the new thing, but nobody wants to read the book or take the course, (laughs) seek out the mentor. And when I say read the book, I'm saying start full book. I mean, don't just pick it up, read the first 20 pages, get through the book. Now, if you're like me, I skip around in the book, but I'll read the thing. Mm-hmm. I will take the course. If I buy the course, I'll sit in front of my computer, take notes, do it. If I'm going to go to the seminar, I'm there. I'm not there just to network. I'm there to skill up. Mm-hmm. If you want to switch gears, if you want to get into a new space, for me, it was I was getting out of dentistry into this online space. I had to skill up. Mm-hmm. I had to study the Frank Kearns, the Brendan Burchards, the Eben Pagans, the, uh, you know, the people that were doing this at a high level with adding real value. Yeah. So skilling up is huge. Most people, after they graduate, don't read more than 
two books a year max. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, right? So you got to skill up. But remember, as you're skilling up, don't get cost, don't get lost in the research. The research doesn't equal the results. Skill up and say, okay, I've researched this enough. <laughs> now it's start to now it's time to really get into the process of doing it. It's think 80 20 and like what's the end result I'm trying to get yes. out of this skill? Outcome based thinking, yeah. right? So that was three. You've got to skill up and uh, ask yourself if you're switching gears, are you skilling up? Huge, huge, huge. And here's number four. You have to be okay. And this is the one that really gets people down mentally. You have to be okay with starting from zero. <laughs> like starting from zero means, hey, you may be at a job right now for 20 years and you're crushing it. You're the man, like you're the woman, you're like the person everyone goes to. But you just don't like it, but you're getting, you're getting that respect and that accolade. But when you start from zero, you don't have early results. It's mm. crickets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get used to crickets, crickets for a while. <laughs> you guys know when you started the podcast and oh, yeah. now it's great. But when you launched your, your wife bought your first product, right? <laughs> Joe? So, Seriously, man. Yeah. You got to get gotta comfortable with that silence. From zero. Yeah. You have to be okay with the lack of early results and be like, this is okay. It's part of the game. You know, Jeff Bezos packed his own packages, licked mm-hmm. his own stamps, walked them over to the post office when he started at Amazon. Yep. <laughs> it's awesome. He was okay starting from zero. So why can't you be okay starting from zero too? You need to start from zero. And when you do, be inspired. Be like, oh my God, this is awesome. I'm doing this. Be on the path. You know, mm. Correct course along the way. Yeah. Skill up. Do all those things. And number five is literally set, and we've heard of this one, but I, it, it kind of ties everything together. Set routines around them, all these things. Give yourself a routine or a habit around these times, like what you're going to do in your day, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. What are the routines that you are setting around these positive movements forward? For me, it was like, I had to shoot video for my courses. When am I going to shoot them? Well, I had to create, I'm like, I can't, gonna, I, I just don't have the time to go into a video studio and drive there every day. Like mm-hmm. I got to shoot hundreds of videos. I'm like, the best way for me to do it is to take a room, take a whiteboard, take a place where I can shoot this consistently. And I can be very dependable on this on a daily basis and I can get it done. It's, it's being very sustainable. So I set that routine around creating content where I, it's not hard for me to create the content because I have a certain place. It's very convenient. It's in the house. It's boom. So if you make it tough, you're never going to get there for yourself. Mm-hmm. You, if you have to go, drive an hour to get to the gym, you're never going to work out. So mm-hmm. um, yeah. set those positive routines around all this stuff. So these five mindsets, I feel like as you start to follow your goals, your dreams, your mission, these five are huge. I love that. Um, so yeah, the, the, I, I hope they, you know, you guys can know if you're taking notes on this, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, Take this one in. This is yeah. a big one. Oh, I love it. And the, the starting from scratch, one thing that actually I think is interesting about that is after you've done it a few times, I, I, I don't know if you guys are like this. I'm speaking for myself, but I actually get really, really excited by the notion of starting from scratch now. Mm. Like for me, thinking oh. about going <laughs> down a new rabbit hole and building something and knowing that nobody's really going to see it from the, like on day one and just kind of yeah. building something brand yeah. new has become one of my favorite things in the world. Like I find it really I exciting. I, I love that yeah. attitude. I, I love that attitude. Like, thank you for mentioning that because people should hear that you get excited by starting th- something that's new. Like that's cool. Yeah. It's, it's this what if question, like mm. what, what yeah. if I tried this? And then, and then, you know, it's that whole entrepreneurial thinking thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. you can't turn it off <laughs> yeah. know, no matter what's going on, <laughs> which is amazing. And a curse can be, yeah. but um, oh, so I know we're, uh, yeah. we're, we're kind of running tight on, yeah. on time right. here. Um, I do want to, we have one question we like to ask everybody before we wrap up, which is the book question. Do you have any, any books that you sort of recommend often, or you find yourself referring back to very often? You know, a great book, I think in today's time, today's world is Deep Work by Cal Newport. Mm. It is probably one of my favorite books. It talks about focusing and doing that deep work to really create the things you want to do. We, we live in such a consumer society where people are just consuming all this content. And the ones that are winning are the ones really c- creating the content. 
creating mm. the courses, creating that business, whatever you want to do, you have to create it. And for you to be able to create something, you cannot be consuming all the time. So deep work gives you a real insight into the value of working monomaniacally set on one thing and how to do that. And your concepts behind it. I talked about taking out the rats. Yep. This goes into a whole other level with that concept, which is, um, which is huge. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's something I'll pick up because that's, yeah. that's hitting exactly what you're talking about. And, and your course, uh, I know you, you have some training as well that folks can check out. Where can yeah, they go I find mean, that? We have, you know, so many courses and stuff, but I think, um, for, you know, as an intro, just to get in, um, I have a free seven day challenge. Um, it is, it is awesome. Of course, mm-hmm. I'm, obviously I'm biased, but it is every day for the next seven days, you will get training on so many levels. I mean, essentially we start off with day one, we talk about energy. So, you know, how do you maximize and sustain, feel sustained energy? And then day two, we get into how do you get stuff done? Day three, we get into getting clarity on your new ideas. And I really walk you through if you are lost with an idea or you don't have an idea, how do you go from I, what is the framework of getting clarity on those ideas? And then I get into day four, we talk about an online marketing plan. And day five, we talk about how do you transition out of your job if that's a thing for you? Hmm. Uh, day six, we talk about how do you attract a new environment, friends, and relationships. And then we talk about creating that new life blueprint. I mean, it's a lot of stuff packed into seven days. But if, if you need a reset, a jump start into the next, part of your life. Um, take this seven day challenge. Uh, I call it the seven days to jumpstart, you know, the next part of your life hmm. It's the jumpstart challenge. And it's just seven days with me and it's totally free and it's uh, great content. And you'll see, we got hundreds of comments in there from people literally all over the world having breakthroughs uh, under the videos. And it's all video based where I send you a new video every day. And you will see. I mean, I think it's pretty awesome. I'm really proud of what we've done there and the community we've created. We've had thousands go through that right now. And wow. um, you just go to drganatra.com, um, D-R-G-A-N-A-T-R-A.com, uh, drganatra.com. And it will just walk you through. You join for free and it's it's awesome. That's um, cool, that, that man. would be the biggest thing I, I could recommend. Yeah, yeah sounds yeah, like go. it's a perfect synopsis of what, everything we talked about here. And yeah, that's, that's I mean, the it's entryway. Kind of, right there. You have to know these. Like in today's world, you can't just talk about how do you get stuff done. You kind right. of have to know marketing. So I put that in there. Love yeah. it. Yeah, we gonna say I, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm going to go opt in for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll link it all up in the show notes as well. Obviously, yeah. for folks driving, uh, definitely go check it out. Rinesh has always been the most stand up energy. I just love your energy, the enthusiasm oh, and passion. You. And if it's something you're actually lit up about, you know, i.e. this, mm-hmm. then I know it's yeah freaking amazing you can't not oh, talk to Ranesh you. and not or not you can't talk to Ranesh and not have a smile on your face after the conversation just because <laughs> yeah. you, you know awesome. the energy is just so just so well, great I, I have self-conscious reasons why I don't smile too much around him because he has the most pearly white teeth ever <laughs> so yeah. I can't oh, compete, man, well, can't we, we gotta get together in real time and yeah. I, like I said, it'd be great if you guys were out dinners with me all the time because we could just talk about this stuff all day. <laughs> hey, we can always well, cruise up to Irvine, your area, Justin Malik. I know he listens to every yep. episode. So, Justin, <laughs> your ears are burning. Yeah. Uh, let's set something up, all yeah. of us. Yeah, we can, yep, we can make a time. dinner happen for sure. Yep. Yes. That's awesome. I, those are good guys. And um, hey, I just want to say thank you, you thank guys, you, for bringing me on and giving me a chance to share some of my story, my background, and really just kind of being part of my mission of helping other people to, you know, live into their best selves and, you know, get into their best version of what they want next for themselves. So of thank course. you guys for giving me that platform and that, you know, that reach to do it through what you're doing with, you know, Hustle and Flowchart, which by the way, I'm so curious, how did you think of this name? Hustle <laughs> and Flowchart it is the most unique and it's such an awesome name. How did, give me well, a So point. there was a movie, an old movie called Hustle and Flow about yep. uh about rappers basically yeah. <laughs> yeah. um which it didn't really stem from there but we thought it was a good little play on words yeah i was just in the shower one day and i'm like we should make a podcast called hustle and flow chart it just popped into my so brain cool. there's really no <laughs> massive story behind yeah. it i mean the only story we put to it is i was always more the hustle grinder you know the quick actor matt's a lot more analytical thinking things through so flow charted out you know spreadsheets and yeah, the funny thing is we came up with the name for the podcast before we defined what the name totally. meant totally <laughs> That is awesome. That's true entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> Our podcast image was made in about five minutes by Matt. <laughs> so it's like, let's be honest. Like some of the best stuff, or we think the best, is just kind of done quickly. 
Yep. It's Not so overthought. is. So. Get started, yeah. right? Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, no, and you're very welcome for coming on the show. And I know there's a lot more in your future, all of ours. So we'll we'll chat again. I know it. Hey, thank you guys so much. God bless you both, and I wish you continued success with the podcast and everything you guys touch in the in the business world and personal world and all that. All the best for you guys, always. Same, man. Appreciate you. Okay, guys. Take right. care. See you, buddy. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. And I hope you just enjoyed this episode you just listened to. Now, right now, before we sign off, I have a few things I would love for you to do. So the very first thing is to go find our guest on Facebook and tell them that you loved their episode with us. That's going to help them uh, just feel good about themselves, but also uh, it's going to spread the word a little bit more for us. So go find them on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook and go say that you love their episode and maybe one cool thing that you learn there. The second thing is to go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast. Just look up Hustle and Flow Chart and hit the subscribe button. And the very last thing, the third thing is to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast and help us spread the word more. That's how more people are going to get uh, this awesome knowledge, this, this cool podcast training and a whole bunch of other cool free training that we give out at evergreenprofits.com. Come. So that's about it. Go find them on Facebook. Go subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review. You would be amazing if you did that, but you're always amazing. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you in the next episode.